Welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance, along with Ricky Vitalico and Ben Davis. I'm Michael Barkan, John Crook. In a moment, that is the way to start a season. 2-0 for the Phillies. They win it 4-2 over the Oakland Athletics. They get great pitching from Kyle Gibson. Was amazing today. And as well, seven hits. They score four runs. Ricky Bo, give us your first impressions. First impression has to be for Kyle Gibson because you, you, you look at this, you know the A's aren't that great of a hitting team, but you have to come out and still perform. And the one thing he did extremely well was get ahead of hitters, right? When you're a pitcher, you step on that mound. You want to be 0-2, 1-2. Anytime you're ahead in the count, that gives you an advantage. He took full advantage of that as this game went on. You know, when you're in good pitcher's counts, that opens up any pitch that you want to throw. This is why he had strikeouts on the, on the sinker, strikeouts on the cutter, strikeouts on the slider, and strikeouts on the changeup. So you used everything. Why? Because you're at it in the count. You can mess around a little bit. Ben, I don't know if we were expecting this from Kyle Gibson today. His career high in strikeouts was 11. He threw 10. That's an incredible way to start a season. It goes to show you that what happens in spring training just doesn't matter. Kyle Gibson was not sharp in spring training. He really made a concerted effort to work on the cutter to both sides of the plate, righties, lefties, and the cutter was in full play today, and he got a lot of outs with it. We were able to get it up underneath the hands of some lefties uh, and get it down and away to righties. It was really good. But this offense, you just can't sleep on these guys. You, if you're Cole Irvin, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I got two little ground balls to start the game off. And then he one gets away from you to Bryce Harper. And next you know, Castellanos on the first pitch hits a 426-foot home run to straightaway center field, and you're losing two to nothing. Like, wait a minute, I just got two quick outs. What the heck just happened? That's what this lineup is going to do to you. You cannot sleep on them. And, and for the second game in a row, we talk a lot about last year. You think about what you saw last year. Phillies were up two to nothing through five innings today right tacking on runs that was a big problem for the 2021 team now all of a sudden you see them doing that and it saved them in this game today those two extra runs on the home runs were huge and they came after a two nothing lead and then kind of a little lull in the ball game Phillies tacked on two more they were big runs it's a beautiful thing let's go across the street right now and check in with John Cruck called today's game with Tom McCarthy Cruck always great to see you and a 4-2 Phillies win and I'm going to quote you now, something along the lines of this season could be really something special. Um, just an overview on why you think that's so this year. Just because of the deep lineup. Uh, and, you know, again, it, you know, it all started last year. When you saw what Ranger Suarez did last year, now you know he could be a, 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 a quality, above-average Major League starting pitcher. That helps the rotation. You get Knable at the back end of the bullpen. Uh, that helps. But when you have this lineup, and we didn't have the power when I played as this lineup, but we had a deep, deep lineup. Uh, and, I, and I think, if memory serves me correctly, there wasn't one complete game against us until after we clinched in Pittsburgh and we were all too hungover to play the next day. <laughs> so we had, well, I, I shouldn't say hungover. Yeah, hungover. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and, and, you know, we had a bunch of the September call up guys had to start that game because we were. Uh, incapacitated and Jim Fergosi told about four or five of us not to even show up in the dugout and we obliged him on that but it was a we had a deep lineup we we were aggressive early but we 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 worked a lot of walks this team seems the same way and I love the philosophy that Kevin Long has brought in hunt the fastball hunt, how many times have we seen it over the last handful of years where you know, first pitch fastball down the middle, strike one. Okay, we're going to give him strike one. Well, you know, that's great if it's a guy that doesn't have great stuff. But, you know, when you're facing really good pitchers and you are aggressive early on fastballs, then it makes them have to throw something else. And, and you know, that's when you get ahead and counts or they hang a breaking ball or something and, and you take advantage of it. This the lineup is so deep and so powerful uh, that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be just – I, I, like I said, I wouldn't want to be a starting pitcher against this lineup very often. John, Alec Bohm was replaced in the late innings for you with uh, Johan Camargo. Do you foresee that as being a constant thing, or if he improves a little bit fielding-wise, that he would stay in there? I, I think you're going to see that a lot. Uh, you know, again, it's just, uh, you know, it's a situation where, uh, you know, when you have a lead, and even though they have guys in the bullpen that can strike guys out, you know, you, you look at Familia, you look at Alvarado, 
uh, even Knable, you know, those guys are going to throw a lot of ground balls. So if you want, you know, you want your best infield defense out there uh, with a lead in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, and 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 you know, like, I don't did Camargo even get a ball hit to him? That's <laughs> you know, so. Uh, you know, I could have played third end, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, he did go out and catch a little pop up that would have dropped over my head because I wouldn't have ran after it. But um, yeah, I think you're going to see Camargo in there some and uh, uh, Stott in there some uh, to replace Alec. And uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, look, you're in a situation here where you're expected to win. They didn't go out and get all these players with the hopes of winning. You're expected to win. And feelings, you know, look, you're at a point now, I know it's only the second game, but your feelings go out the door. And, yeah, we're going to replace you for defense until your defense improves to where we feel confident enough to keep you out there late in the game. And and that's no knock on anything other than the fact that we have to win. Why do you think Knabel was in this game in a safe situation after he pitched yesterday? You know, I mean, uh, you know, we, we have to win. We're not going to, like, take days off and say, ah, oh, we're going to do this and rest a bunch of different guys. You know, look, they want to go 162-0, and but, of course, that's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, they understand that, you know, you give away one or two games, that could cost you. Well, you just mentioned his name, Johnny, and Corey Knable. The Phillies have really lacked the back end of the bullpen guy the last couple of years, and it's really hurt them. They went out and acquired it. It was the first acquisition that Dave Dombrowski made. Uh, and I think it's going to be a huge. He showed me a lot today. The run scores, you know, there's some, some de defensive errors there by JT throwing the ball away. Kemp goes to third. He allows a single to Lowry. But able to get that double play ball, I mean, that showed me a lot. And I think the Phillies are really going to reap the benefits of signing Knable. Yeah, I agree with you, Ben. I, you know, the thing is, is that he's a veteran guy, and, and he's not going to get rattled. Uh, you know, look, he's going to blow a save. We all know that's going to happen. Not many guys other than Brad, named Brad Lidge uh, go through a season perfect. Uh, so he's going to blow a game, but he's going to be able to block that out and move on from it. But I love what he did with Murphy. He threw that fastball up and away. You know, Murphy's, look, you know, you know Murphy's up there. He's, he's not going to try to just flare a single to right field. He's trying to tie the game up. And he took advantage of that aggressiveness with that pitch up and away that he got the ground ball uh, to Didi for the double play. That, that to me, tells you, because he was a little struggling with his command a little bit. But, you know, once he got that, uh, you, know, you know, look, once that run scored and, okay, that's over with now, it's 4-2, to two, now it's time to go to work. And, and uh, he gets the double play and, and uh, basically put, that, put the game to rest. Look good. All right, Mr. Crock, you look great yourself, my friend. Dropping that weight, you look. Look at that. You look Where's like you're tie. Play. I don't think that ball would have gotten hold hit on, over your Hold head. on, hold on. It's right here. You got the tie. <laughs> Whoops. Take me home. That's country right. Country road. All right, get the guitar out, man. No, I'll get the. When he gets the guitar, I'll keep singing. Uh, and you don't want to hear that, so don't get the guitar. We'll check you tomorrow with Mike. Thanks, Johnny. Excellent. All right, see you guys. Thanks, John. John Cruck in the booth. Now, here is Joe Girardi post game on his team's 2 0 start. Necessarily a strikeout pitcher. Uh, what made his stuff so unhittable? Today? I just think his location um, and his ability to throw, you know, a couple different pitches on both sides of the plate, right? You don't, very seldom do you get the same look. Um, I mean, he's a, he's a pitcher that really does his homework and understands what he wants to do, and him and JT get on the same page, and it's what you get. Other than that one pitch from Aaron yesterday, I think the starters, 17 strikeouts, no walks, 13 innings. I mean, can you talk about just the group? and? Yeah, it's been a focus of ours. Um, Throwing strikes, right, and getting ahead and counts. And um, I think it's really important now, especially with your starters not being built up to normal innings, that the way you get deeper in games is by getting ahead in the count. You know, I thought Cole did a really good job, too, you know, against us. He was ahead in the count. And he was down and hitting his spots. Um, you get a big home run from Castellanos, and then you get the two um, later on from Reese and Seggy, which really made a difference. Taking out Bowman, was it just obvious uh, defense? Yeah, well, he had a great day, and you know, I would say that you know Camargo's our best defensive third baseman, um, and you, you know, I wanted um, 
Alec to end on a, on a really good note. I mean, I think that's important for him with what he went through last year and uh, was proud of what he did today. I mean, he did great today. Um, so it's just kind of what I thought was best. Do you worry that, like, maybe sits in his head a little bit? That no, I mean, me we understand that he's a work in progress, and he's getting better, and, and, and we're really happy with the work that he's doing. But you get in some of these tight games where you get some slow rollers, I mean, it's tough. You know, uh, you know that Nick. Joe Girardi saying, yeah, Johan Camargo is our best defensive third baseman, but Alec Baum played great today. Look at those guys right there. Real Muto, Schwarber, Harper.